I've been explaining a lot about post-traumatic growth, and I want to explain the difference between resilience and post-traumatic growth. I've been a therapist for more than 24 years, and I've seen a lot of people that are resilient and overcome. I've had a friend, Christian Moore, and he talks about the idea of the resilience breakthrough, and I believe he coins the term the ability to bounce back. So they're at a level of happiness here, then something happens, then they're below it, and they're able to bounce back up to that level. But when we talk about the difference of uh, post-traumatic growth, it's not just coming up to the same level, but it's actually moving to a higher level after the resilience into post-traumatic growth or finding meaning in the future and the change, the transformation that's happened after this. When we talk about resilience. We want people to be resilient, but I think sometimes it's being overused a bit. Let me explain how. This summer, I learned that weeds in my garden are resilient. I've also learned that the stains in my colors are resilient. Recently watching TV, I learned I can buy shampoo that helps my hair be resilient. It's being overused a bit, right? Look, we know people can be resilient after injuries, traumas, and experiences, but I want to explain a little bit about that. Those who have been listening to my videos know that I use the analogy of a maple tree to teach the concept that people can find post-traumatic growth. And one of the areas of that is finding resilience. When we look at a maple tree, this is a drawing of a maple tree trunk. And I'm trying to identify this idea that you can take a maple tree and they drill into that maple tree to pull out the sap. But you can tap into that same tree year after year and multiple taps and it won't kill the tree. Those marks will grow over and heal. Now they'll still, you'll still be able to see where it happened. They'll leave a mark and a scar on the tree, but it won't kill the tree. And I use that symbolically that we can go through these trials and traumas and yet we can overcome. Now we know that those traumas are going to cause some emotional scars, maybe some physical scars if we lost limbs or sight or something like that. But we can recover. It doesn't have to kill the tree. It doesn't have to kill you. And you can grow and become resilient. And, and not only that, become an inspiration for other people. Now, what are some of the qualities of resilient people? This study talks about this idea that it's people that have more self-awareness of what's going on. Maybe they can practice some acceptance. Uh, people that are maybe more optimistic, people that find a little bit of hope, maybe some positivity in their world, uh, people that can draw on their strengths, people that are also compassionate towards others. Many people that are resilient also have some self-care. Uh, this study found that people accept what they can't change and many had support groups to help them during their worst trials or traumas. I've worked in a lot of different areas over the last 24 years as a therapist. And one of them, I was able to work at a residential treatment program where I took a bunch of clients to a bowling alley. And we did some bowling as a natural high experience. And I started realizing that these clients' lives are often like a bowling pin. So I asked one of the employees if I could take one of these pins home. And I took that into a group and set it in the middle of the group room as we went to process our day and asked them, how's your life like a bowling pin? So I had this image drawn up, kind of a broken down bowling pin. It's interesting that bowling pins are actually made of wood inside the bowling pin with a plastic coating painted this way. The wood inside is designed that way so that it can absorb the hits from the bowling ball. It's As I talk with group members, they'll tell me things like, 
my life is like this bowling pin, right? I get knocked in the gutter a lot. Uh, automatic systems keep picking me up. Um, the the ball the balls keep coming. The hits keep coming, right? I'm all beaten up like this bowling pin. So they explain this idea, but the interesting thing is the pin keeps getting up, right? And we talk about we just need to keep getting up, keep going through the day. When I'm working with people that are struggling, maybe at a real down, depressed time, like we need to keep getting up. We can do one step in front of another. We need to keep moving forward. I often will tell people, let's look at your life and the things that you've gone through, the hits that you've taken, how you recovered from them, what worked for you in those things. Uh, well, they'll say, you know, I went hiking or I went to support groups. I relied on friends. I did work towards my spiritual power. Like what, what worked? And we can identify you are resilient. You've shown you've been resilient in things in the past. Now what are we going to do with this trial and how we're going to go forward? This is an interesting quote I found. The difference between post-traumatic growth and resiliency. So they say resilience focus on adapting or adjusting to adversity with or without struggling. So how did you adapt with that? But post-traumatic growth focuses on transformative changes resulting from the psychological struggle caused by shattered beliefs or worldview. Again, resiliency is important. And again, if this is our baseline, we want that to help us to move back up to our base. But eventually with post-traumatic growth, we're going to move beyond that into a higher level because of this trial or trauma that we've been through. I hope that you can find post-traumatic growth after trials and traumas. If you have, please identify what helped you become that resilient. If you want to share this with others, that would be awesome. And if you can like and share this video, that would be great. I hope you stick around for the next video.